welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome back to the Do It Heartily channel. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another day of life, another day that we can worship you, another day that we can praise your name, another day that we can grow in our relationship with you. Uh, whoever is out there watching, whether their day has gone good or bad, uh, it's a rough one, whatever it may be, I pray that we are all encouraged by spending time with you. I pray that you remove the devil and his distractions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, we are still going through the armor of God. Ephesians chapter number six. We've been talking about all the armor and all the armor that we've been talking about has been used for defense, protecting our minds, protecting our hearts, holding it all together by telling the truth. Uh, whatever armor we've been putting on, it's all for defense, defense, defense. Well, today we're going to talk about a little bit of offense. Ephesians chapter six, verse number 17. We talked about last time and take the helmet of salvation talk about that and then now this time and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god here's my sword right here and sometimes i have just a new testament only i call that my dagger right and then uh anytime we talk about a sword a sword can be used for defense right if somebody else has a sword and they're swinging 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 and you're blocking 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 but then you can go forward and you can use a sword for offense you can use a sword for attack now i want you to think about people that use swords right uh, there's people that are, they do it in fencing. You know, they have one hand back here and have the sword. <laughs> you know, they go step forward, step back, and they got to poke them in a certain spot, and then they get a point. Or you know, back in the day, you know, they got samurai, you got ninjas, you've got gladiators, you've got all sorts of people that practice with a sword. And these people, when they would wield their sword, it wasn't the first time. That they had ever used a sword and they were just like for example um i used to have a collection of swords when i was a teenager but i would put those swords on my wall as decoration if you handed me the sword i didn't know what to do with it i mean i knew that i would grip it at the bottom and i know you know you could swing this way or that way but if someone trained with a sword attacked me and I had my sword, I'd be done for. They would know how to knock it out of my hand. They would know how to hit me. I mean, really, I would probably just drop my sword and run because I have not been trained. I haven't practiced day in and day out on how to use a sword. That's what people do that know how to use swords. They train, they practice. They probably practice with wooden swords first. Then they move themselves up to the blade and they know exactly which way to swing, how to deflect, how to attack, all this kind of stuff. And they know how to do it without hurting themselves. You know, I've seen videos of people training with swords or messing around with swords that didn't know what they were doing and they've hurt themselves because they didn't go through the proper training and practice up to having this as a skill. You say, why are you talking so much about a sword? Why do you think God chose that weapon to be used as comparing to the Bible? Turn with me now to, uh, to Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12. Look what it says. It says, for the word of God, that's what we're looking at here, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Notice how it describes it. Two, sharper, piercing than any two-edged sword. If you're going to use a sword, you have to practice with it. You have to let somebody else train you in that art form so that you become, can become skilled and know exactly what you're doing. The Bible is the same way. If we're going to use this book, if we're going to use the Bible as a weapon for offense or defense, we have to train with it every single day. That way we don't hurt ourselves and we don't hurt other people. 
Well, how do we use it for offense? We need to memorize scripture, right? If someone asks you, hey, how do I become a Christian? You should have those verses memorized. I call it the Romans Road, Romans 3.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 6.23, Romans 10.13, John 3.16, John 14.6. Those are all verses that point people to the gospel. But if somebody asked you and you didn't have your Bible, could you talk to them about it? If somebody asked you a question about Genesis or creation, or if somebody asked you a controversial topic, you know, would you be ready to answer them? That's what it's talking about with the sword. We need to memorize it. We need to study it. We need to read it so that we are trained in how to use this sword for us and also for defense. And, and when the devil tries to attack us, what did Jesus do when the devil tried to attack him, when the devil tried to tempt him? Jesus quoted scripture. You can do the same exact thing. When the devil tries to attempt you, to attack you, to tempt you, or the world's coming at you, or people are coming at you, and they're questioning, 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 you need to be trained in this weapon right here, this sword, so that you can be ready to defend yourself. So this is the sword of the Lord. Ephesians uh, 6 verse 17 says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Make sure you're studying the word of God today so you can be trained in how to use your sword. All right, we love you. God loves you even more, and aloha.